Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. Major League Baseball has been floating out some possibilities to get at least 100 games or so played this year. The latest one puts 10 teams in three geographical divisions with a DH and no games scheduled outside your own division. The games will be played in regular stadiums with no fans, at least in the beginning. Sounds good. But what about the players, of course? They'll be tested, but based on the amount of virus cases and deaths in the, in the world, with at least 3,000 players, coaches, and managers, along with media and television and radio crews, doesn't it seem like this is a train wreck waiting to happen? And what if, as an example, Francisco Lindor and Mike Trout decide it's too risky to experiment and to play? I love baseball as much as anybody, probably more. But on this 100th anniversary of Indians shortstop Ray Chapman, who's the only player in history to die in a game, if they asked me what I would do, I would say what Indians fans have been saying since 1948. Wait till next year. We've got the D-man Dennis Maniloff. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it is a uh, Wednesday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine in its uh, 24th consecutive year, seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. The D-man Dennis Maniloff is here, but before we get to him, we're going to get to Jerry Snodgrass, who is the OHSAA Executive Director, who's uh, been a busy man for quite some time here. Jerry, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, and from the voice of reason and truth right there, you said it in a nutshell of all the things we're facing. All right, it's truth and reason, not Ruth, not Ruth uh, and that's, reason. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's okay. All right, lots to get to here. We're going to get Dennis Maniloff in here shortly. But, Jerry, uh, it's been a tough year for everybody involved in, in schools and athletics and, and everybody else, and I think you guys have handled it pretty as, as well as you can do. Well, thank you very much because, just as you said, the concern about those players, concern about the umpires, concern about the fans, all of those things enter in. And, you know, I, I don't like to say wait till next year either, but when it's the health and safety of kids and all those people, umpires and everybody, that has to enter into the picture. Yeah, my grandson is just getting into track for the first time, and he's going to miss out on that. And I, I can you multiply that all over the state of Ohio. And you, it, you, got a, you got a problem that you've dealt, dealt very well with. All right, we know for the rest of this year, the, the spring sports, unfortunately, they are done. But next year, what can we say about football and about uh, whatever else there is uh, that you have to deal with? What, what goes into that well, decision, and, and what can we expect? You know, and what's so challenging right now is it is for anybody. I'm a former coach, and I think coaches identify with this. You know, we're control freaks. We like to be in control. And we're just not in control of all the things that face us in the next coming months. So the best that we can say is literally like Major League Baseball and everybody else, we're planning for every single case scenario that exists. We're hopeful, obviously, that we start on time. But if we don't start on time, we're making plans that we have a delayed season. We're making plans if we should have, you know, a shortened season. There are no nothing to release at this point, but I always assure everyone that we're working on those plans. We have added things that we have to consider eligibility of our fall sport athletes, you know, because the way school was canceled, uh, you know, remote learning, but it really disrupted the normal grading system. So all those things were planned and ready to, to go forward with, depending upon what the situation presents. I, I'm wondering, because there's so many people involved and so many people who uh, have, to, have to be involved in this decision, for the most part, it seems to me that this, the uh, uh, cooperation has been more than you could expect, actually. I would think you'd hear people from the other side, but I, I think everybody's on board with this, aren't they? they? They are. And I think, you know, in, in many cases, I think that's one of the things I'm proud of our staff, and proud of what we've done, in that, you know, we are the ones that need to make those decisive decisions relative to high school sports. I mean, they're looking to us for that guidance, they're looking for us that decision making. Even when, like you said, we've heard from the other side, trust me. But at the same time, you know, we have to make those decisions 
with the health and safety as the number one factor that we have to look at. And, and the cooperation has been there. What about, uh, you know, when you see the governor every day talk about what's going on in the different counties and different sections of the state, is, is your uh, agreement to whatever decisions you guys are making, is that, is, is that unanimous no matter what side of the state we're talking about? It is, and that's one of the things. That we, we just could not get in a situation where one county or one city, whatever, could let their kids do something, but another area of the state could not. I mean, I think you're seeing that in professional sports. It'd be very difficult for whether it's MLB or the NFL to let two teams do something because it may be deemed safe there, but the other team's not. And I think that has to do with the we're not the MLB, we're not major league sports, we're not collegiate sports, but we're trying to provide a level playing field for all of our teams. And, you know, again, our schools have been tremendous in their support uh, for what we're doing. Athletic directors, coaches, they're anxious to get out there, just like kids are anxious to get in the classroom, but they've been very supportive on what we're doing. Uh, you're about to get some financial help here. Uh, uh, Raising Canes, Ohio, with four locations in Northeast Ohio, uh, they're gonna help out tomorrow, April 30th, from 4 p.m. until closing, they're going to donate 15% of uh, of sales. That's tomorrow from 4 p.m. until closing. And uh, what a great move by the people with Canes, Raising Canes, Ohio. It's terrific, and you need support like that. And, and our thanks go out to them. Jerry, if you have anything else that needs to be added, I'd be happy to hear it. Yes, and I will tell you, thank you for Raising Canes of Ohio to come forward with that. And I think so many people last truly believe that we are a state entity funded by tax dollars or state monies. We're not. We are a nonprofit organization. We give money back to our schools. We pay. They, they pay no tournament entry fees. We had to cancel our scholarship program. That was devastating for me to do that. But honestly, we didn't have the funds to do it. Raising Canes is coming forward, and that's what so, I'm so proud of them for doing it, so we can help return those. We lost our winter sports revenues. We lost our spring sports revenues. And again, it's not all about the money, but like any business, profit or nonprofit, we have to have those dollars to provide those opportunities. So I'm very proud of them for what they're doing. And I can't thank Raising Canes enough. So really tomorrow, 15% uh, of all the sales go to, to help return those programs. And I encourage people to go out, get some great chicken fingers. All right, well, you'll, you'll get a, a great meal there uh, on the takeout. Uh, the four locations in Northeast Ohio, you saw them before. 4 p.m. till closing, that's tomorrow. 15% of all sales will go to the OHSAA, and uh, we appreciate that very much. Jerry, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, anything that you'd like to add at this point, except uh, wish that everybody is safe. Yeah, Jim, you know, in addition to that, just like you said, nobody loves baseball more than you. Nobody loves high school sports more than me. I'm a product of it. I've spent my lifetime in it. Our kids hopefully need to understand, I want it back as bad as they do, but I won't compromise their health, safety of all the people involved. So thank you for having us on and uh, helping to tell our story and help get us back. Very good, Jerry Snodgrass is the OHSAA Executive Director. We appreciate his time tonight and also to Raising Canes, Ohio with their four locations in Northeast Ohio. 216-575-0403 is our number. Dennis Maniloff is standing by and uh, we'll talk with him the Ohio Lottery, they've given out a lot of money, and uh, you have a chance to win it here also. Try uh, pick three, pick four, or pick five to win up to $500, $5,000, and $50,000 twice a day, all from the Ohio Lottery. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with uh, new content posted each and every day. We appreciate uh, your response to that. You, uh, We ask you the question, you respond, and we get it on the air for you. Facebook.com is the place to go. Thanks to uh, Jerry Snodgrass, Dennis Maniloff standing by. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. 
Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take X subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Check out uh, birthdays for today. Louis Aparicio, what a, a tremendous uh, defensive shortstop he was. Bernie Parrish, starting uh, defensive back for the Browns in 1964. 1947, debutante uh, was born on that day. Dale Earnhardt, Kelly Shopik, and B.J. Goodson, uh, all uh, born on the 29th of April. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Let's bring in the D-man, Dennis Manlop. Find out, uh, hello there, D-man. <laughs> Yeah, a little, little dark here, but, uh, you know, we had to change venues, but we're doing the best we can. A little mood, mood music is what you might need there. There we go. Yeah. What's up, Les? Everybody safe at home? All right. Yes, okay. sir. Good. All right, let's talk because there's some talk about uh, baseball, D-Man, and, and uh, of all the possibilities that they kind of throw out there and float, uh, throw it up against the wall, see what sticks. This one looks looks like it's doable. Obviously, they, they need some help from the – the scientists and the uh, doctors and all that. But what do you think of this three divisions uh, based on geography? I I think it's reasonable uh, to throw it out there. I do wonder, I believe, in the scenario you're talking about why the Braves would be in the the central and the Pirates would be in the east. Um, But, you know, I think MLB's got to, take on as many ideas as it possibly can. I would prefer you keep the divisions intact, uh, you know, the divisions that you're going to ride with uh, going forward and try to, you know, have as much continuity as you possibly can. But I realize it's very difficult to do. No, but it also seems to me if this does work, if this is what they wind up with and it does work somewhat, that they opened the door to talk about some permanent realignment uh, there. I know, I know Paul Dolan has been in favor of that for quite some time. That's exactly my point. To me, if you're going to play a season, even a truncated season, 100 games, by the way, I think that should be the minimum uh, for a Major League Baseball season. You really can't go much lower than, than 82, I suppose, one more than the majority, but uh, preferably 100 to 120 if you have to go that route. 
Um, but if you're going to rearrange the divisions, you're setting the stage for that to occur uh, beyond this year. And, and that's fine if that's what you want to do, okay? But if you're going to go back to the normal divisions, why not try to keep the divisions the way they are? I think one of the compromise solutions to what was proposed in the three-division format is you can't realistically expect games to be played in every team's ballpark because certain parts of the country are hit much harder by the COVID than others. Are you talking about the Yankees and the Mets? Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. In addition to the Cubs, the White Sox, the Tigers, the uh, Dodgers, the Angels, I I think that you have to avoid uh, COVID hotspots because the worst thing you would ever want is for uh, you to be playing baseball in, let's say, September and round two of the COVID or a COVID mutation comes up, and the next thing you know, uh, you're you're playing in a uh, in a hotbed. So, <laughs> I, what you can do is cut down the number of venues in which you play. You have major league venues, but you don't have as many as thirty. You cut down. I think it, you can go as low as eight, uh, if need be. Well, interesting. My my concern. And there's so many things that could come up here. My concern would be, uh, while the players want to get paid for a full season, what if, for example, Francisco Lindor or Mike Trout or somebody like this, somebody like uh, that, uh, they just say, you know, I'm not on board with this, uh, and and I don't want to play. I don't know if they're in violation of contracts. I don't know if, if they have to let them beg off if they want to beg off. I'm not sure what would happen in a case like that. And uh, that that's just, you know, that's just one more thing they have to think about. That, that's true. Uh, I, I I don't know what the answer to that is either. Last night, let me just say this too. Uh, you know, your your previous guest, uh, a great man, Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, you know, he is talking about high schools as opposed to pros. And, and to me, there's an expectation level uh, from a professional standpoint that is much higher than. The high school, and that's, you know, it almost goes without saying, but I said it anyway. Therefore, I think that the professionals should make every effort to play this year. That's why I would respectfully disagree with you, Les. I think they should try to play. Uh, I'm not asking for them to play in front of fans, but I think that there would be enough interest generated by television and, and streaming that they could actually have a season, albeit a shorter season, uh, played out in in Major League ballparks in front of no fans. Well, Reuters took a poll on if Americans would attend sporting events when they reopen. Let's take a a look. 17% of American adults said they would attend professional sporting events when they reopen. I assume that would also go with uh, uh, concerts and uh, things of that uh, sort. Uh, 59% of the fans said that Before a vaccine is available, sports leagues should uh, hold games with no in-person fans. I'm not sure if that 17% on the top one deals with uh, Americans who who have gone to baseball games or sporting events or if that's just uh, the the entire population. But that's kind of a figure that uh, these sports are going to have to think about and concern themselves with uh, how, how they get people back once they do try to do that. Yeah, Les, but I, I would caution uh, the, the the second part of that graphic, the 59% uh, saying they're waiting on a vaccine. Uh, honestly, I don't want to be pessimistic, Pete, but I'm still waiting on a foolproof vaccine for any of the coronavirus strains. Uh, if you sit around and wait for a vaccine and think that's going to be the automatic elixir, uh, I, I think you're you're in for a long, long, difficult uh, road. I, I think you're going to have to deal with the this strain of the coronavirus, COVID-19. But, uh, you know, people that think that a vaccine is automatically going to solve all the issues, uh, I, I I just disagree with. No, it's not going to clear up everything for everybody. There's always going to be neg- negativity involved in that. Um, what do you, do you think that, well, somebody said to me that People don't care about baseball that much anymore. And I, I happen to think for the morale of the country, 
baseball needs to come along at that time before football just to get everybody used to what, what we used to have and what, where we have to go from here. Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts in regards to that? Oh, absolutely, Les. I mean, look no further than the popularity of the NFL draft. I mean, I, I, in the COVID uh, uh, outbreak, in the COVID pandemic, I get that the NFL draft is always popular, but there's no denying the numbers from this year. And, and you know, they did it. Uh, by the way, big hand for the NFL and for uh, and to Roger Goodell for uh, pulling it off virtually the way they did. But uh, I think that you are allowed, whether you're a diehard sports fan or a casual sports fan, you're allowed to want to see real sports. You're allowed to do that without having to cower in shame in the corner and go, oh, I'm so sorry I mentioned sports during a pandemic. I mean, you, people have to somehow, some way, get on with their lives, and that includes professional athletes, owners, managers, coaches, GMs, and whatnot. So uh, I, as long as you're responsible about it and you take measured approaches with it, I don't have an issue with, with you saying, hey, I want to see sports back. You know, I, I know you, I know you do a, a podcast with uh, the Roadman, Kenny Rhoda. How's he doing, by the way? How's Roadman doing? Yeah. Uh, he, he's doing fine. His son is in Brazil, though. We we're thinking about him for sure. But, uh, you know, he, he, Roadman's doing great, as All always. Right. Well, tell him I've got the ultimate OIC because he invented the term. You ready for this? He did. And it's, it could combine it with the how come quickie that, you know, the Indians have a, a new second baseman, Cesar Hernandez, right? So wouldn't it be yes. ironic? That if the if they don't play in Cleveland ever, and the the Indians win the the whole thing, the World Series, that that Cesar Hernandez could win a World Series ring and never step in the city of Cleveland. That would be yeah, an OIC only in Cleveland. That, that would be for sure. All right, two one six five seven five zero four zero three. If you'd like to talk to Dennis Maniloff, you're more than welcome to do that. We'd uh, we would appreciate that. We'll get back to his thoughts on the draft. We haven't talked to him since the draft last week. Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations, east, west, and south. And uh, they've got the guaranteed uh, lowest prices anywhere. You buy something from them, you find out in the next year there's a lower price out there. Uh, Alex will refund it to you immediately at northeastfactorydirect.com. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a minute. Dennis Maniloff with us. More sports and less Levine exclusively on cleveland.com. Celebrate NatureStone's 30-year anniversary with a free NatureStone floor. During 2020, we will be giving away 30 free floors to 30 very lucky customers to say thank you for making NatureStone the best concrete flooring solution for garages, basements, and more. Call or visit NatureStone.com today to register to win, and we'll send you a copy of our new buyer's guide absolutely free. There's no purchase necessary. Winners will be chosen monthly. With over 30 million square feet installed for more than 60,000 customers, it's easy to see why I always say, it's not just a floor. Wow, it's NatureStone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a uh, How Come Quickie. Uh, you know, we've had some thievery with How Come Quickies, guys stealing them. Little, uh, It's against the law. We'll have the authorities come in. How come with so many thefts of How Come Quickies recently on this show, a new stat has been chosen that is uh, sto stolen phrases. Not quite stolen bases, but stolen. Hey, D-Man, we got a, a big uh, 
a big problem out there. It's uh, sweeping the nation. They're stealing how come quickies from each other. Yeah. Plagiarism. Plagiarism. It's got to be against the, the, some rule somewhere. 216-575-0403. Overall, your thoughts on the, uh, the draft for the Cleveland Browns and, and uh, what they did and what they didn't do. Well, a very important qualifier right off the top. Every team, uh, every f fan base thinks that their team had a great draft, okay? So you start from that uh, jumping off point. But I'll say this, the Browns didn't do anything that made me scratch my head. Uh, I was all for the uh, staying at 10 and drafting Jedrick Wills Jr., the tackle out of Alabama. Uh, I thought that Grant Delpit being available at 44 after the Browns traded down from 41 in the second round was a great thing for Cleveland, and I'm glad they drafted him. Um, you know, you, you think about Phillips, the linebacker. You think about the the uh, the D, D lineman from Missouri all the way down to, to Peoples-Jones as, as your final pick, uh, the, the talented, albeit, you know, underachieving, if you will, receiver out of Michigan, I, I thought the Browns did did a really good job. But as I said, every team thinks they did a really good job, especially now when no games have been played. And we don't know if any of these players, that goes that starts with Joe Burrow and Chase Young, we don't know if any of them are going to translate at the NFL level because they haven't played it down. But but you felt good, the fact that you didn't have to sh uh, scratch your head. That, that That's... That's a good start right there. Absolutely. And it, it certainly felt like the the very Stefanski de Podesta paradigm knew what it was doing. Um, you know, it didn't surprise me that there were no trades in the top 10, even though starting at three, reportedly there were, you know, it was open for business. The Lions had opened that pickup to a potential suitor. Uh, the Giants at four had opened their pickup to a potential suitor. But I think what you saw was a draft that had a lot of quality players, but in the eyes of a lot of the teams, very few transcended. If not, I mean, we're talking about very few. How about two yeah. guaranteed transcendent players in Burrow and Young? Right. After that, a lot of quality, but not enough where a team wants to trade up to get them. I just so wonder. Everybody stays, what's that, Les? Go ahead. Uh, Go. So, you know, everybody stays put in the top 10, doesn't surprise, didn't surprise me at all. And the fact that, you know, Isaiah Simmons went eight to the Cardinals, I'm sure they didn't think Simmons was going to be there. They snapped him up. Uh, and then the moment the Jaguars took C.J. Henderson at nine, the corner out of Florida, you saw the Browns, you know, in the bottom left-hand portion of the screen on ESPN said the pick was in in a matter of seconds. So I think the Browns had made up their mind. They either had one tackle in mind, who was Jedrick Wills Jr., well, they had two tackles in mind, Andrew Thomas and Jedrick Wills Jr. And I think I'm, my gut tells me after that, they were maybe going to look to punt. Uh, we'll never know that for sure. But for absolute sure that Wills was one of their guys, if not the only one they wanted out of that tackle class. And that's why they turned their pick in so quickly. And I also wonder if there were a lack of trades at that point because they weren't sure of the technology that they were using. And didn't want to take a chance on a mistake, but I think the Browns got what they wanted. They didn't have to show everybody they they were the smartest guys in the room, even though they they might very well be. All right, so uh, Jedrick Wills uh, had an opportunity to take number seventy three for his uniform number. Joe Thomas said, "Yeah, go go to it," but Kevin Stefanski uh, snuck in and said, "No, first of all, that's uh, very generous of Joe to offer that number, but I just didn't think it was the right thing to do for a bunch of different reasons." And I told Jed that. The good news is I get to assign these numbers, so I made sure what numbers were available. So uh, Wills is going to be number 71, so uh, you can still retire Joe Thomas's number whenever you want to do that. Um, any thought on that? Well, Les, is it not true that the his college number, Wills' college number 74, is taken by Mr. Hubbard, yep. uh, Chris Hubbard? So yeah, I guess that was all. It was interesting that, he couldn't get 74 from Hubbard, but he was going to get 73 from Thomas. But <laughs> then again, uh, I don't know. You know, Chris Hubbard might ha it might be a special number in his heart, and he's still active, so I'm not going to dog him there. I want Hubbard to be a contributor on the Browns, of course. 
in a rotational way. But all I care about, I don't care about the number. I don't care about what the uniform looks like. I just want a guy who can play. And by most accounts, if not all accounts, Jedrick Wills is a legit prospect. I do know this, Les. We talked on last week's show. Uh, you know, Wills was thought very highly of by a lot of people. And one guy that I respect and trust immensely is a former Brown and former NFL player Lewis Riddick, who has been in uh, several front offices and now works as an analyst for ESPN. And Lewis Riddick said in his mind, uh, go, in the run-up to the draft, not just after the draft was over, but in the run-up to the draft, he said it was Jedrick Wills and everybody else in that tackle, tackle class. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that the Browns went with Wills. No, and I, I never believed that you had these four tackles that all four were equal. Some had uh, flaws. Some had uh, things that they were very successful at. It, they weren't equal. There, it, there were probably a, a whole variety of answers that, or reasons why somebody thought some, one of the guys was number one, somebody else number two. But as good as they all are, they couldn't have been equal. So it was the Browns who had that pick at the 10th spot, and they, they went with their guy, Jedrick Wills Jr. Uh, Joe Thomas, uh, future Hall of Famer, had this to say. Does this man move like an all-pro in the NFL? The technique he is using, the dominance, the finish, the change of directions, the explosion that he had, the way he could bend his ankles, knees, and hips and for create force and power. When guys uh, tried to bull rush him, he was firm and stout. That's the only, uh, only one guy looked like that, and that was Jedrick Wills. Coming from, I mean, it's easy to say, uh, coming from Joe Thomas, uh, you got to believe in that, right? Who would know better? Well, and, you know, we had said on previous shows that uh, Joe Thomas would have been a great resource for the Cleveland Browns to use. And we're not, we can't know for sure what was done behind the scenes, but my guess is the Browns did, in fact, use uh, Joe Thomas as a resource, as an evaluator. Not to say that they couldn't have arrived at Jedrick Wills without Thomas's input, but it certainly came across post-draft or post-pick that Joe Thomas was bullish on Jedrick Wills. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if he had evaluated the tape of these top tackles and said, uh, Jedrick Wills is just as good as any of them, if not better in, in many cases. Well, give, give credit to the Browns coaching staff and Kevin Stefanski because you know, Joe is not a regular member of the coaching staff, but the uh, the, the ones who are said, apparently uh, went with the program. And I remember I was doing the arena football at one time, the Thunderbolts, and the and I, I was doing it with uh, Eddie Johnson, the assassin, great linebacker. And the coach, and, and Eddie would go up and try to help some of the players defensively. And the coach actually said, uh, Eddie, I'd appreciate it if you stay away from my guys. I, I don't want them to get into bad habits. Yeah, I mean it's uh, you and I. You and I date to the uh, Thunderbolts in the '90s, uh, Richfield Coliseum, yeah. Earl Brutes, and uh, you know all those guys. But it, I remember less. Remember the practices at the IX Center? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the old plant tank. <laughs> the uh, Thunderbolts or tank plant rather. Uh, all right, Joe Thomas. You know we we everybody knows about the quarterbacks, how many they have, and they have shirts with all the names. How about the following guys since Joe got hurt in week seven of 2017? All these guys have seen considerable snaps in each, uh, in, throughout that season. Spencer Durango, Desmond Harrison, Greg Robinson, Kendall Lamb, Chris Hubbard, and Justin McCray. we got to have the new shirts, new jerseys with all those names on them. Yeah. I mean, for Baker Mayfield's sake, I sure hope that uh, the buck stops with Mr. <laughs> Wills because – Otherwise, Mayfield will will be well, he won't emerge from the season in one piece. But you think about where the Browns are now, as opposed to where they were a couple of months ago uh, on the offensive line, and you feel so much better as a Browns fan when you realize you have Wills on one side and Jack Conklin on the other. When you had neither on uh, one of them uh, when the see, when the off season began. No question about it. Dennis Maniloff is with us. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can explore your interests, find a program that puts you on the path to a bright future from Tri-C with over 1,000 courses in 140 career and technical programs. Go to tri-c.edu for more information. 
We will uh, come back in a moment. More sports from Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin-Wallace, so I started at Baldwin-Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only three ninety nine dollars a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page, or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three nine six five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. Time for this date in sports history, April 29th, uh, 2015. The Orioles beat the White Sox 8-2 in front of no fans at Camden Yards. There was civil unrest in Baltimore at the time, and it led up to that game. So. When, uh, if and when the season gets underway this year with no fans, it won't be the first time that has happened. 216-575-0403. Andrew Berry making the rounds uh, in recent days. He was on uh, Good Morning Football on the NFL Network. He talked about the trade rumors involving Odell Beckham. I think this is uh, actually a topic, at least from our perspective, where there hasn't been a ton of ambiguity. We've been clear from the beginning that we view Odell as a fantastic player. We're a better team with him on the field. We see him as a long-term member of the organization. We really like how he's acclimated and adjusted with the new staff. So the rumors, that's just not something we can control, but we're happy to have him as part of our organization. So uh, that's it. Do um, you believe him? Uh, yes and no. I felt that this new regime was going to give a player with – Odell Beckham Jr.'s resume and his skill level, an opportunity to show what he can do in front of them, okay? As opposed to, all right, new regime, we're going to clean house on a guy who's got skills. Um, you know, they're not going to do that. So it doesn't surprise me they're that he's sticking around in 2020. And I, I think if he was going to be gone, it would have happened by now. Uh, they also have injury concerns, or at least coming off surgery concerns with Jarvis Landry. Um, you know, there's not much. Uh, yes, they got Hollywood Higgins back and Donovan Peoples-Jones, but those guys are not on the level of OBJ. So it, it makes sense that OBJ's back at least for 2020. 
Were you as surprised as I was? They went uh, signed almost a million dollar one year deal with Rashad Higgins. Uh, obviously, there's a, a, a doghouse for Freddie Kitchens with Higgins and Njoku, but uh, now, now they're both back. Are you surprised by those two moves? No, I'm not, especially in the case of Higgins, because I, I, I like Hollywood Higgins. And I do think that he got caught up in some sort of uh, doghouse, even though Kitchens denied that such a, uh, a house existed. I, I think he, he got caught up in whatever it was. And to me, there was no denying when he was on the field and healthy, obviously healthy enough to be on the field that he had a chemistry with Baker Mayfield. And I, I would like to see that, uh, you know, reinstated, if you will. I'd like to see them try to do what they do, uh, he and uh, Mayfield and, and Higgins. So not, not surprising there. And Njoku is a, a physical specimen. There's no question about it. And I don't think you want to walk away from a physical specimen like that until you've seen him up close. Uh, again, new regime wanting to see it, but with Hooper and you know maybe Bryant, they brought in uh, the tight end situation seems decent to me. Yeah, they they uh, bring in Joku back and then they they draft one and they sign another, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the wide receivers on the current roster now, and uh, there you see it: uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Rashad Higgins, Damian Ratley, uh, Taewon uh, Taylor, JoJo Natson. Jarvis Landry, Donovan People Jones, Hodge is there along with Moore. So what do you think as a as a as a crew here with the wide wide receivers? What do you think of them in general? Well, it, it looks good as long as Landry returns uh close to, if not a hundred percent from the hip surgery, as long as Beckham is engaged uh mentally and, and, and is physically healthy off of his uh core surgery. Um Higgins again. Fresh start. Peoples Jones is a fascinating case uh, that I think I I think he can help the Browns. But you have to also remember you can't go too deep into the uh, wide receiver depth chart because you have a Stefanski offense that relies a lot on the tight ends. You're going to have two tight end sets a lot, I'm sure. You're also going to have you know two running backs you have to uh, accommodate in Chubb and and uh, Kareem Hunt, even if you were to kick Hunt out of the backfield, he's, you know, going to be a slot receiver. So there's only so many ball. There's only one ball to go around and a lot of targets potentially. So I would six, five, seven, five, oh, four, oh, three is the number. Jarvis Landry was on ESPN's first take today. He says a lot of communication. And I know that for a lot of interest in, uh, instances throughout the year, we had to do with it. Protection has a lot to do with it. Guys not making plays down the field had a lot to do with it. And I'm sure Baker would say that he missed uh, a lot of throws and he didn't make the right reads on certain things. But uh, I think ultimately a lot of things came down to game planning and uh, to try to attack teams. So it looks like they're spreading the blame all, all around, D-Man. As they should. I mean, last year was a multi-dimensional flop. You know, it had all sorts of elements to it. It wasn't just one person. It wasn't all Freddie's fault. It wasn't all the coaching staff's fault. But I certainly get where uh, the players would say, hey, we felt like we were going into this game, uh, you know, with one hand tied behind our back. Granted, that didn't look that way when they went to Baltimore and, and hammered the eventual AFC North champion Baltimore Ravens. Freddie Kitchens looked like he was doing just fine at yeah. that moment, but no problem there. on balance, he, he on was, balance, there were certainly he, issues with game. He was on his way season. to coach of the year at that moment. <laughs> yeah, it, it it fell apart in a lot of ways. But the best thing for any of the returning players to do, Les, is look in the mirror and say, "Hey, I recognize that this might have been a reason, that might have been a reason, this might, but I'm going to look in the mirror and say." I got to take stock in what I failed to do to help the cause. Exactly right. Northeast Factory Direct, east, west, and south, three locations. You also want to check out the website before you go. It is northeastfactorydirect.com. Talk to Alex today. And uh, 
found out something last week, and I just wanted to check with him. He's at all three stores uh, each and every day. So you, you recognize him. You know him if you see him when you go in there. Ask for Alex, and uh, he'll take care of any questions you might have. Sokolowski's University Inn. They are uh, one of the great restaurants in this area. Can't wait till they can get open again. And hopefully that uh, that date comes soon. They need your support, and uh, they, they've been doing it since 1923. They're winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. Only five in the country win it each and every year. We'll come back in a moment. We'll check Les Levine history and more. More sports and Les Levine exclusively on Cleveland.com. Get Nature Stone for up to half off and never replace your garage flooring again. Cracked, uneven garage floors are dangerous. Thin paints and poly coatings you can do yourself are slippery, peel, and don't correct problems. Why pay for a floor that won't last? Only a professionally installed Nature Stone garage floor is safe and corrects problems that paints can't. And Nature Stone comes with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty. So there are no hidden maintenance costs. Schedule online today at naturestone.com to qualify for up to half off. Hurry, offer ends April 30th. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Let's take a look at this date in Les Levine history. April 29, 1961, a wiffle ball game was played in front of no fans at Chavez Levine in South Euclid. The fans who bought tickets for that game found out the game actually was at Chavez Ravine, and that was in Los Angeles. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff, you see him right there. Uh, when are you next on uh, WTAM, D-man? Uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night, 7 to 10. Excellent. Uh, let's uh, take a look at our Facebook question of the day and your responses to it. Very simply, Clowney, Vernon, or neither, you make the call. Larry Pantages says, didn't realize Elaine Kiffin's brother Chris is the new D-line coach. Give him wh whomever he wants. Kevin Piles, I say both. They have the cap space and having three premium edge rushers, including Garrett, available to al alternate will keep them all fresh and provide a hedge in case of injury. Glenn Berger says Vernon will be tough to trade due to his uh, $15 million contract. Go after Clowney. Considering they both missed a lot of uh, time last year due to injuries, the Browns should get at least a full season, hopefully more, from that combination. Uh, a tough defensive line is the key to a great uh, defense. D-Man, uh, you, you want Vernon, you want uh, Clowney, or, or neither? Or both? That's a tough question. That truly is a tough question, Les, because number one, I was you know, disappointed in Vernon. I thought he underachieved. Granted, he was dinged uh, and injured to an extent, but I still thought he didn't play well. Clowney, I don't know if I can trust him, and but I don't want to say neither either because I'd rather have Vernon than not. I'd rather have Clowney than not. So I guess in, in all scenarios, even though he's very expensive, uh, give me Olivier Vernon to for a shot at redemption in 2020. Your, your point on Clowney that you don't trust him, you're talking about the reports that once he signs the big contract, he's, his, he, his desire may change a little bit. Well, there, it's even more to it. Yeah, I mean, you're, there are questions about his desire, about his competitive fire, uh, you know, not just for one down or one series, but 
over the course of a season. But you've also got injuries uh, with Clowney that have dogged him since uh, he came out of uh, college. So uh, I, I don't know that I trust Clowney. But, it, but then again, it wouldn't surprise me, let's say, if they were to rid themselves of Vernon and sub in Clowney. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Uh, that's uh, when we do the show from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern time. Any other time of the day or night, you can call us on the voicemail of Truth and Reason, 216-266-50. Call any time and leave us a message. We'll use those messages on, uh, on a future show. It's the voicemail of Truth and Reason. We'll come back in a moment. We're coming back one more time with the D-Man Dennis Maniloff. Terry Pluto will be here tomorrow night. More sports with Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. You love it, always wanted it, and there's never been a better time to get Nature Stone than during our spring weather breaker sale. We're breaking spring sales records with up to half off beautiful Nature Stone garage floors, patios, porches, and more. Correct cracked, uneven concrete that thin paints and poly coatings can't. Every weather breaker savings comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, and there are no hidden maintenance costs. Schedule online today at naturestone.com to qualify for up to half off. Hurry, offer ends April 30th. It's not just a floor, wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Terry Pluto will be here tomorrow. You see us from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern time and uh, archived all day and all night. So uh, that's where you can find us on, on uh, Cleveland.com. Dennis Maniloff is with us. Uh, D-Man, we got some quickies. You want to go through them? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Tracy in Lakemore says, Great job, guys, talking about last Thursday night. Great. Uh, your draft shows on Thursday night and the Saturday show recapping the draft was just outstanding. Those shows were bonus coverage, and I'm sure that no other sports market in the nation has to enjoy it like we did. Your dedication is really appreciated. Thanks again, guys. Thanks to you, Tracy, for watching us and spreading the word. We appreciate it very much. Big Ed sends in a how come quickie. How come the difference between in-laws and outlaws are outlaws are wanted? That's good. I just read them. I, I just read them. Uh, this from Stu. How come turning vegan would be a big mistake? Good. It is good. When when uh, Bud Shaw's here, he doesn't like puns, but that's okay. Uh, Cleveland Bill, how come no one has figured out that the term complimentary football was coined by a special teams coach who was seeking job security? You know, they've changed. Who, who gets to change names of, of positions and all that stuff? If you go back even 10 years, you'll see how many changes have been made. What The Sam and the Mike linebacker? When did that come and along? And the Will. Sam the Will Mike linebacker? Will. Yeah. Mr. Gullible says, I, he says, how come when the guy came to my door collecting for the town's new swimming pool, I gave him a bucket of water? Gullible. Uh, well, cash is liquid. Um, how come I tried to take some leftovers home from the party, but my plans were foiled? <laughs> Should quit on that one. John Patrick, how come I stayed in bed so long today I was late for the couch? Okay. 
You know how I can figure out, it's almost like sign stealing. You know how the uh, Houston Astros did that, the sign stealing? When Brian comes in here with a stack of quickies, if he's smiling, I know they're good. And if he's smiling half yes. the time, they're, they're okay. So Dips he, it off. he was smiling today. Um, all right, got a couple of minutes just to riff on anything going on. What, what do you think about anything? Well, again, the Browns should feel good about their situation. And I, I think the less you see of Jimmy Haslam, the better off you are as a Browns fan. And I think we didn't see much of Haslam. He's let his, his guys do their thing. And hopefully he will remain patient uh, with them. So I'm, I'm happy to see where the Browns are. Unfortunately, Browns acquisitions, trade, free agency draft don't occur in a vacuum. If you're paying attention, and we know Browns fans are, the Ravens improved, uh, the Steelers improved. They they would say that Minka Fitzpatrick was their uh, first round pick from last year. Right, you're saying uh, they improved, but they they didn't actually have that first round pick, but they still did a good job. All right, well they would say Minka Fitzpatrick was their first round pick, so uh, they're happy with that. And then of course the Bengals, have, you know Joe Burrow, it, it should make for a very interesting AFC North. You know, I didn't ask you this. We talked about baseball possibly starting up again. Didn't talk about basketball. Do you do you see any need to have basketball come back? Yes. I would love to see the NBA come back. I've said it on this show, Les. I don't see why the NBA can't uh, take a page from the NCAA and do a March Madness-style tournament. One and, and out? What's that? One and out? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you keep the seeds as they are. No more regular season games need to be played. And you get everybody together at, at one uh, site, preferably, I think, Vegas. And you play it out in a one-and-done format. And you have it be a once, you know, once-in-a-lifetime format. It's not going to be the, the, the way it's going to be going forward. Of course, we know that. But we didn't have March Madness. Why can't we get... I don't know, July or August madness. Have you uh, kept up on the Michael Jordan uh, documentaries? Yes, I have. I, 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 what I learned, I learned a couple of things, but that uh, uh, Ron Harper was surprised at the choice of, of uh, Craig Elo guarding him on the shot. Did, did, were you aware of that before? I wasn't aware of that beforehand. Not, neither was I, Les, and, and it was surprising to me. Uh, so it was surprising. And I read a story Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com did, talking to Craig Elo. Elo was surprised. Mark Price was surprised. I mean, they, they both said that maybe Harper had a private moment with Lenny Wilkins, uh, and Wilkins said, no, you know, we're going to do it this way. But I find it odd that it, in most people's eyes, this didn't come out until now. I think that Craig Elo's mistake was not on the defense. I think it was on the offense when he scored the uh, Cavs inbounded with six seconds left. If he was just a little slower or put the ball yeah. higher up on the backboard, it would have left less time for Jordan to do what he did. Yeah, and, and it, it hurt that the double team, the planned double team of Jordan kind of fell apart when Larry Nance got faked out at the top there. Um, you know, it was a team thing. I don't blame I know Elo's the easy target, but I don't blame Elo. And, and, and here's the other thing. To knock Elo too hard is to take away from the brilliance of Michael Jordan. As much as I hated it, that, that shot going in, I went ballistic at my, in my dorm at Northwestern when it happened. Uh, you still have to credit the player, Michael Jordan, for the great shot. Yeah, and, and by the way, it's, it's unfair to rip uh, uh, Elo on that. I thought he actually played pretty good defense on it. If you see where his... His arms and hands were, I, I, that just made the shot tougher. But unfortunately for Cleveland fans, uh, Jordan won it. I, I don't know that that many Cleveland fans, uh, younger fans, knew that the Cavs have swept them six times in six games in the regular season before losing uh, that best of five. Uh, that's why it hurt that much more. And, and I, as a huge Cavs fan in my Northwestern dorm, uh, you know, knowing that the Bulls potentially. Uh, could upset the Cavs. Uh, it, it was very, very difficult for me to take. All right, D-Man, thanks as always for joining us, and we'll see you next uh, next Wednesday night. You got it, Les. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Manilov does a great job wherever he is. 
to uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, Terry Pluto will join us. We'll see you then. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.